Have you ever thought about an external hard drive that you can access from anywhere in the world? That's exactly what the Synology B station I have here is all about. This is a new lineup from Synology targeting average consumers who want to have their own remote access storage without the complications of a typical network attached storage or NAS. This unit has 4 terabytes of storage and it costs $219 which is about $100 more than a traditional external hard drive. But for this extra cost, you get remote access to your files, free access to B photos and B files to manage your backed up gallery and documents. In this video, I will tell you everything you need to know about the Synology B station, so let's find out. Just a quick disclaimer, this unit was sent over to me by Synology, but this is a totally independent review. And I will start by comparing it to other options that offer the same functionality to understand who is it for. So here I have the 4TB B station, and as an example, let's say I have a 4TB external hard drive from Western Digital and a Google One subscription as a cloud storage option. If you are looking to remotely access your data, only the B station and the cloud subscriptions will give you this functionality. For privacy, the external hard drive and B station are the best options as no one else gets access to your data. When it comes to the storage size options, the external drives come first in this one as it can go up to 44 terabytes. Google One has plans up to 30 terabytes, but it's very expensive, and B station comes third as it only offers 4 terabytes of storage, so it depends on your needs, but 4 terabytes for storing documents and photos is more than enough based on my personal experience. Comparing the cost, only the external drive and the B station are a one time payment options. A 4TB external drive costs $100 less than the B station and a 5TB plan from Google which is the closest option costs $249 a year which is more than the $219 of the B station plus you have to pay this amount every year. When it comes to the features, Google One is the best option as it offers a lot more AI features, Google Workspace apps and more. The B station comes second as you get a free access to B photos that uses AI to organize your backed up photos and B files to manage your data, sync your B station with third party cloud services like Google Drive, OneDrive and Dropbox, plus the ability to backup your flash memories or USB drives directly to B station using the built in USB ports, while the external hard drive doesn't have any of these features, so it comes third. So to sum up, if you are looking for remote access, reasonable storage size, one-time payment, better privacy and some quality of life features, then the B station is the best option. If you want the best AI, best apps and you are happy to pay extra with less privacy, then Google One would be the best option. And of course, the external drive is the cheapest and most basic without remote access or features. This should make things less confusing and help you decide which one to go for based on your priorities. And now let's get back to the B station and see how to get it up and running. In the box, you will find the unit, the power adapter, an ethernet cable, the user guide, and that's pretty much it. And as I mentioned earlier, B station is targeted towards average consumers who are not very technical and that's why the setup process is very simple. All you need to do is to connect it to your home router via the included ethernet cable, plug the power adapter and use your phone to finish the setup process, but make sure you are connected to the same network, then scan the QR code on the user guide or at the bottom of the unit. Open the link and follow the on-screen instructions. You can either create a new Synology account using your email or sign in with your Google account or Apple ID. For simplicity, I will sign in with my Google account. Then the wizard will instruct you to connect the unit to the router and power it on, which we already did. Then it will ask you to press the power button for 4 seconds until you hear a beep, which is needed for security reasons to make sure you have physical access to the unit. Once done, just wait for a couple of minutes until it finishes the setup. And lastly, it will prompt you to give it a name and that's it, you are good to go. The welcome page will ask you to download Synology apps on your phone to manage the station, which you can also do on your PC or through the web. The B Files app will allow you to manage and backup your files, while B Photos is to automatically sync your gallery from your phone to the station and it will automatically organize them using AI. So let's go through them one by one. Starting with B Photos, once you open the app and sign in, you will be able to set up your sync preferences, either to backup all photos or the new ones only. Choose between Wi-Fi only or Wi-Fi and cellular, photos only or photos and videos, 
and lastly choose what to do with the duplicates. Once you are happy with the settings, tap on enable and now all the photos will be synced automatically. So let me back up some photos to show you the key features. Now let's take a look at B photos after backing up some of my gallery. You will see here this traditional grid view for your gallery and you have the ability to change between day, month and year view. And here's how it looks. Then you have the albums tab and here you can check different things like the people and in this case it uses AI to identify faces and here are all the photos of myself and here are the photos of my son. If you want to assign a name for each person you can tap on it then give it a name from here. So let's say Imad and here you go name as Imad and next time I search for my name it will show me all my photos then I have the subjects in this case I have animals then the places you have two views the grid view for all the places or you can check the map view as well and here are the photos on the map this is how it looks and also you have a separate page for the videos then you have the sharing and from here you can check the albums you decided to share with others or you can create a new album and send the link to anyone you want. And finally you have all your settings and the available storage that can be checked from here. Now let's take a look at B files on the PC to get access to all the features. First download the B files desktop app which is available for Windows and Mac. I will leave its link in the description below. In my case I will be using Windows run the downloaded file and go through the wizard. You will need to sign in with the same account, choose a folder to sync with your station. In my case, I created a new folder and named it B station. This is not a mandatory step, but I recommend doing it as it's very convenient. Now the setup is done and you will find the app menu in the system tray for easier access. It will show you the recent activities, the notifications, and a folder button to quickly access the folder you chose during the setup process. This folder is two-way sync which means any file you copy here will be backed up to the B station automatically. You can deal with it as a normal folder on your computer. So for example, I have this Word document. When I open it, apply some changes and save it, it will be automatically updated on the B station. So next time I access my B station remotely, I will see all the changes. And the same applies to the files you upload remotely using the web portal. In this case, I uploaded a video file to the same folder listed under my PC name and in a matter of seconds, I can see it on my computer. You can also backup files only to your B station without syncing with your PC. In this case, open the web portal and make sure to choose my files tab and upload whatever files or folders you want. Now let's go through the other options. You have the cloud services tab which will allow you to link any of your cloud services to B station to get access and sync your files. As an example, I linked my Microsoft OneDrive account. Once you sign in, you can choose between two-way sync or one-way from OneDrive to BStation. Once done, you will see all your files inside the BFiles app. Then the USB backup tab. This one will allow you to backup any external hard drive or flash memory by connecting it to the back of your BStation. You have a USB-A and a USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 ports for this purpose. In this example, I have a flash memory connected to the station. When I click backup, it will automatically detect the device, which is called DTR400. I can select to backup the entire device or a specific folder. I choose what to do with the conflicts, either to replace or keep both. In addition to activate the auto backup option. So every time I connect the flash memory, B station will automatically backup the new changes. We also have the external drives tab, which is only for browsing and copying data from any external storage attached to the unit. B files also gives the ability to share files with others for collaboration. You can right click the file, then enable link sharing with the ability to protect your link by setting an expiry date and a password. All the shared files will appear under the shared tab. From here, you can edit the link or revoke access at any time. Now let's go through the settings which you can access from this button next to the profile picture. Here you can check the storage info. The users tab will allow you to invite up to eight friends or family members to your B station. As per the description, they will get their own personal space, which is a really nice feature for family sharing. Under system, you will be able to edit the device name, host name, 
unlink the B station or factory reset. The backup and restore tab is for backing up your B station either to Synology C2 cloud services, which requires an additional cost, or to an external hard drive. This gives you extra peace of mind just in case your B station gone faulty. Then we have the update tab, which is self explanatory. And lastly, the advanced settings. Here you can choose if you want to receive email notifications for important events like the abnormal temperatures or drive errors, connect with Synology technical support, and the local access tab, which is very important. There is a toggle to activate local access, which means if you lost internet connection, you still can access your B station from your PC if both are connected to the same network. That requires a username and password to be created, once done, it will show you the IP address that you can use to get local access to the unit. All you need to do is to copy and paste this IP to your internet browser and sign in with the username and password you created. I also recommend adding it to your bookmarks for future use. Once you create a local access, you will be able to activate the SMB service. Once activated, you will find your B station under network drives. It will ask you for the same username and password you created for the local access only for the first time. This feature gives you access to the station via the built-in file explorer, which is very handy as you will be able to deal with it as if it's a normal flash memory, so you can copy whatever you want or modify your files without consuming any space on your PC. So these are the most important features you need to know. But what about the transfer speed? Here's a 2.9 GB video file and let's start by testing the speed over local network, which doesn't require any internet connection. From the PC to B station, the speed reached more than 100 megabytes per second, which is not bad. But it was slightly slower when I transferred the same file from the unit to the PC. Either way, I was happy with the transfer speed. I also tried to play a 4K video using VLC player on my Chromecast with Google TV by accessing the station through my local network, and it was really fast. But unfortunately, it doesn't support Plex server, which I hope to see coming in the future. So that's everything I wanted to share about the Synology B station and here is my final conclusion. I do love the simplicity and the price of this unit. I think it delivers what most average consumers really need, like the remote access to their files, automatic backup for photos and videos, in addition to the better privacy. But the B station is no way near the network attached storage solutions in terms of features or flexibility. So if you have the technical knowledge to help you operate an as, it's definitely the better option. But if you are looking for the simplest way to backup and access your data remotely, it's definitely worth the money over a traditional external hard drive. So please let me know in the comments what do you think. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.